Welcome to Buckeyes Tomorrow Morning for Tuesday, November 21st. I'm your host, Tom Moore. The game against Michigan is in four days. A little later on today, we're going to be talking to Ryan Day, Jim Knowles, and a handful of Ohio State players at the Woody Hayes Athletic Center. We'll be streaming that live for you at youtube.com slash Buckeye Huddle. And then we'll have, a, I'm guessing, a live instant reaction show, Buckeye Weekly, Tony Gerderman and I, breaking down what we saw, what we learned, what we heard. And we're going to be able to contrast what we saw and what we heard and what we learned inside the Woody Hayes Athletic Center with what we saw and we heard and we learned inside Michigan's football facility. On Monday, Tony and I just got back from Ann Arbor, got to uh, see and talk to in live and in person, uh, Jim Harbaugh, Sharon Moore, J.J. McCarthy, Blake Corum, and Mike Sanders still. Lots of stuff interesting coming out of that. We're going to have a whole bunch of shows for you this week, a whole bunch of bonus episodes on the Buckeyes Tomorrow Morning feed. Going to give you, you know, everyone seems to love these shows where we have clips from the interviews and talk a little, set those sound bites up a little bit so you can really hear the, you know, what the question was that sort of sets up the answer. Going to be doing a whole bunch of those for you. So make sure you are refreshing your Buckeyes Tomorrow Morning feed all week long. We're going to have a bunch of bonus episodes on the Buckeye Weekly feed as well. We know everyone's traveling this week, has a lot of free time to kill in the car and, uh, sitting around the house and all that. So uh, we'll be giving you plenty of content this week as we count down the days to the game against Michigan on Saturday. All right. First show this week, talking to one of these players and coaches, we're going to start with Jim Harbaugh. Jim was, sometimes he's, sometimes he's a little prickly. Sometimes he's in a great mood. Sometimes he's in a weird mood. You never quite know what you're going to get with Jim Harbaugh. He was more personable than you mo- might have expected, given everything that's going on in the realm of Michigan football. Got some interesting answers out of him and got some interesting, not answers, but responses. And this first one is going to be an example of this. The question the reporter asked was, you know, what, what kind of level of respect do you have for Ryan Day? The Ohio State, pro- you know, the program he's running at Ohio State. That was a question. Here's the answer. There's that. Um, it's, uh, it's all about our preparation for Ohio. Um, you know, the days, the minutes, the hours, everything leading up to this game. Um, you know, that's where our focus is preparing ourselves and planning, going to practice and then execute. So, uh, I mean, anything else is irrelevant, um, you know, when you get into this kind of this kind of big game week. Feels like a lot of the things that were not said there might speak louder than the words that he actually did say. Thought that was pretty interesting. It'd be interesting to see what Ryan Day says. I'm going to guess he's going to be asked a similar question on Tuesday. We'll see how Ryan Day responds to that. Again, I guess there's not really a whole lot of love lost there between those two guys. So those two guys are not going to have to shake hands or cross paths at all on Saturday because Jim Harbaugh is not invited to the Ohio State-Michigan game this year. He was serving the third of his three-game suspension from the Big Ten for the Connor Stallions uh, incident and fallout and all of that. So no Jim Harbaugh on Saturday. So how has Jim Harbaugh tried to prepare his coaches for the, the new roles and everything they're going to be facing this Saturday against Ohio State? Yeah, it's really, it's really a, a battle-tested team. Um, and empowering people, you know, it's really, it's really that, um, you know, I empowering our coaches, empowering our, our players and it's just amazing job that they've done. Amazing, um, uh, effort, effort, uh, and, um, where players have gone about then coaches, players. I mean, I, I just think back over the last, you know, five, six weeks, especially, I mean, it's just been like a high-pitched siren, you know, like a like a deafening, ear-piercing um, noise, and just after a while, you start to tolerate it, and and then before you know it, um, you just block it out. So it's uh, stay on course. That's uh, what our what our team has done, and and uh, you know, just keep the priorities right, um, and keep the priorities straight, which is faith, family, and football. There is always a lot of distractions around this game every year. Everyone wants to talk about it. It is the only thing that anyone is thinking about in Columbus, in the state of Ohio, and in Ann Arbor, and probably across at least the non-Spartan portion of the state of Michigan. So there are always a lot of distractions. This year, though, for Michigan, you got the Harbaugh thing. 
You've got the looming specter of whatever is going to come next. They just had a linebackers coach fired in the middle of next week. How confident are they that they're going to not you get not going to have any more personnel changes before the game? Well, we don't really know that, but that's just sort of lingering around right now. So, how do you deal with that many distractions? How are they dealing with all of the potential distractions going on during Ohio State week? This is one of these answers. I'm going to just let you know he references the thing that he's about to say that you're going to say that's super weird. It is apparently from Ted Lasso, so it is not a completely weird thing. But it was still, it caught a lot of people off guard. So here you go. Jim Harbaugh on how the Wolverines are dealing with their distractions this week. Um, I mean, it's, it's uh, I go back to that, uh, it's, like, it's like the Ted Lasso show, you know. Um, believe. And what comes out of that is believe. And I'm just so proud, just so proud of our team. Despite that noise, our locker room's in one piece. And uh, you know, like Ted, for me, locker room's. A lot like my mom's bathing suits. I'd like to see them in one piece. <laughs> and we've got that, and it's amazing. And there's so many, there's so many lessons to be learned, many life lessons that, that our young guys are learning at, uh, at this age. And it's how the world works. And, and keeping those priorities straight, faith, family, and football. And we're battle-tested. Uh, and ready to go, and now it's just, it's all Ohio. The week's all about Ohio. Um, working really hard to get ready for this game, using the hours, the minutes, the days uh, to hone our focus, get prepared, plan, practice, and then go execute the game. Jim Harbaugh got Michigan from the level of almost but not quite to Big Ten champion. He Two years in a row, beat Ohio State two years in a row. Now he's facing the challenge of sustaining that success. How difficult is that? Yeah, that, um, I mean, stay on, stay on course. Um, you know, one thing about the, you know, about the noise and it starts to um, you know, be tolerated or, or the, and it just gets blocked out and you know, staying on course, staying on the high road um, shortens that time to, to make that happen. Earlier with the question about respecting Ryan Day and the Ohio State coaching staff, Harbaugh gave kind of really a, a non-answer. Here's another one where the non-answer is a non-answer, but the questions he's not answering is kind of interesting because it feels like if the answer was, no, it's not a concern at all, you would have probably heard that. So how confident is Jim Harbaugh that there won't be any other staff changes coming this week like there was with Chris Partridge a week ago? We are in position to be in position. Um, that's what uh, that's what we know. Eleven and zero. They're eleven and zero, and um, you know everything is all focus and preparation is on this this game as it should be. There has been a lot of frustration expressed by a whole lot of people about a whole lot of different elements of this whole Connor Stallions affair and all of the fallout from that. So, in Jim Harbaugh's mind, what is the hardest part? about him not being able to defend himself because he really hasn't been allowed to speak publicly about any of this stuff really to this point. How frustrating has that been to not be able to come out and sort of share your side of what's happening? Yeah, like I said, I mean, it, uh, it's ear piercing at first, then it becomes tolerable, then, then, you, then you block it out. Stay on, stay on course. How do you learn to tolerate it? Staying on the high road is one way to, to shorten that time down, but, you know, keeping the priorities right. I mean, faith, family, football, that's that's uh, you keep those priorities straight, then other things become irrelevant. Here's another one where Jim Harbaugh didn't really want to dive into it, but I thought the question itself was actually kind of interesting. The reporter asked him, you know, how does this game, and there's a lot on the line in this game, how much does this game go into determining the, both the short and long-term future of the Michigan football program? Um, <laughs> that's a... Uh... Don't have the, don't have a crystal ball. Um, it's all about this game. Um, that's where our focus is. Getting prepared, getting ready to execute, and uh, and I think our team is battle tested, and and there's going to be tough to beat. Looking forward to it. All right, one more. Where again, the non-answer is only interesting because of the question that precedes it. Has Jim Harbaugh, Harbaugh been given assurances 
by the administration at Michigan that his future at the school is secure? All the focus is on Ohio State. I can say that as many times as, uh, you know, that is, that's just where we're at. That's the focus. That's the, and that's part of the life lesson to uh, focus on the task in front of you. And, and when you got a task in front of you, it's a big task. You got you to use every day, every hour, every minute um, to plan, practice, get yourself, get yourself right, get yourself in position to, to go out there and play with the best of our ability. And finally, we're going to wrap this up one, with one that he actually did answer. He was asked about Ohio State star wide receiver Marvin Harrison Jr. Does Marvin Harrison Jr. remind him of anyone? And how do you deal with the challenge of trying to cover a receiver as talented as he is? He reminds me a lot of his dad. Um, great player. Um, you know, you got to be covered. You, you know, you got to slow him down is probably the better word. Um, you know, do, do our best to, uh, to do that, and everything works together. Uh, pass rush. Uh, the, the, the faster, the more pressure they can put on the quarterback, the the um, you know the better the coverage is going to be. Same with the, the coverage. The better the coverage is going to be, then that allows the the pass rush to get home. Um, so it's going to like any like any game, any any time you play a team, uh, you know that team defense uh, is going to be going to be critical. It all it all works together. Well, we will be back a little later on on Tuesday with that live coverage of the Ryan Day press conference and Jim Knowles and the Buckeyes. That'll be at noon. YouTube.com slash Buckeye Huddle. And then Tony and I will be back after that with an instant reaction show, recapping what we heard, what we saw, what we learned, counting down, uh, getting you a little bit closer to the game on Saturday, noon on Fox. And of course, we will be back a little later on on Tuesday with uh, some in, another, uh, another one of these bonus episodes, let you hear a little bit from some of the Wolverines. We'll be doing those for the Buckeyes as well. So you're going to be hearing a whole lot from a whole lot of players and a whole lot of coaches. Listen, every single one of them gets you another 10, 15 minutes closer to kickoff. So it's all I can do. I can't make the clock go faster, but that's that's what we can do to help try and bridge that gap for you, get you a little closer to game day. So that will do it for today. Thank you guys all for joining us. Have a great day. We'll talk to you tomorrow.